What's up gamers? In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best poison shiny hunting locations so you can get yourself some nice shiny poison Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. So for this poison sandwich, you guys are going to be lucky because I'm not using salty herbas. I'm using two green peppers, one yellow pepper, one red pepper, one onion, one prosciutto, a spicy and a sweet herba. It could be any herbas of your choice. That's the one we're using for this recipe. Okay, we got sparkling power poison, tidal power poison, and encounter power poison. So we're ready to go and start hunting. So you're looking for a good spot to hunt whoopers, Powdayan whoopers specifically. Well, this is going to be a really great area and it's going to be located in this entire spot all the way in South Province Area 4. Now, in order to hunt these whoopers, you're going to hang around by any of these bodies of water and just despawn the group of whoopers out. That way, you'll have a better chance at finding the shiny one. If you're not by the water, you'll start to get toxels spawning everywhere else. But when you get close to these bodies of water and just wait for a second, you'll start to see the whoopers spawn around them and also be in the water. So that's pretty much where you want to keep yourself at when it comes to whoopers. Spend your time by these waters and you'll be able to eventually spot a shiny whooper. So that's what I do. I despawn out a group. I come back and you'll see the whooper. It is a nice light purple color. Looks really cool. And it's really obvious when you are going to see one. So just pay attention to these bodies of water. Despawn them out. Keep revisiting the water puddles because that is how you're going to be getting your whooper. And also above here at this at this spawn, there is also a good amount of whoopers here. So basically all these little bodies of water, check them out and you should be able to eventually get your shiny whooper. Good luck. I know a lot of people want whoopers. So there you go. That's how to get it. Wait, before we continue, I need you to hit that subscribe button. I put a lot of work into this video and you're watching it and you're going to get a lot of shiny luck if you hit that subscribe button. So go ahead and, and press it. Okay, you have good shiny luck now. Let's go. Now, if you want a bunch of fun families of Varum and Reva Room, this is going to be the spot. It is going to be the entire pathway of Glaciado Mountain Watchtower. So you can run this entire path and all you're going to be getting is nonstop families of this Pokemon because it's the only one here. And all you're going to be looking for is a gold car. You're going to get nothing else spawning on this route. So if you run down this mountain, just families, just families, and you're looking for the gold one. So usually you're going to start right here and then you're going to turn around and then burn through them so just start paying attention to all the pokemon that spawn look around zoom out you're only looking for gold and because they're families you're not going to be missing any of them so this is where the way i run just dodge the ones that aren't shiny that's all we care about no shiny no shiny and you're going to keep heading down this entire pathway and you can see how many families you're spawning here so this is going to be a very fast way of running into family groups look at that that's three entire families right here look at that oh that is so nice three families and i'm just gonna keep going and heading down this path there's another two families here three families there no gold ones yet so you can see how efficient this this pathway is going to be when you're trying to shiny hunt especially when you have this on now when we had the steel sandwich it wasn't as good to hunt this one down because we were bumping into kufans and copper rajas so it wasn't as good but when you have just the poison on oh this becomes a very very good hunt for this pokemon so when they do stop to spawn you're just gonna want to turn around yeah good luck getting your gold uh river room if you come to Zappo Pico East at nighttime, you're going to be bumping into two poison types here. It's going to be Varum and Gastly's. These two are going to dominate this entire area in Zappo Pico East. So you can do town resets for these shinies. No problem. You're going to be looking for a gold Varum. So it's going to be a little difficult to see. So make sure you're zooming in because sometimes the silvers do look gold at a different angle. So you really want to make sure you don't mess up. Like that looks like a gold in the background. But when you get close to it, you realize it's just kind of reflecting off of the ground and then you're like oh never mind so pay attention to them very carefully as you're doing the despawns and respawns so you don't want to make that mistake keep close eyes on this but that's pretty much what this area is going to do in terms of the spawns at night now if you come to zappo pico east during the daytime you're only gonna have to deal with varooms those are the only ones that are gonna spawn here during the day at nighttime it's just gonna be the gasties but daytime is gonna be pretty nice because it's gonna be a lot easier to look around and look around for the gold one and you can see how many of them are actually around us. So it will be very easy to identify a shiny one here. You can grab yourself an easy poison steel Pokemon. That is gold. Gold colored Pokemon are really nice. Yeah, so just keep doing this over and over again and you'll get one. Okay, here is a very nice spot if you're going to want to hunt down Salandits in order to evolve into Salazzle, which are only going to be the female ones. So you're going to go from Puerto Marinanda and follow 
this pathway all the way to this spot right over here. And this is where you're going to be getting a lot of these Pokemon to spawn and a great way to have them be a solo hunt because in some spots, they're going to be mixed up with other Pokemon. And this is the best one you're going to be looking for. Now, the shiny for this Pokemon is going to be white, a very white uh, colored one with a bandit's mask. So it's going to be pretty obvious when you do see the shiny, what it's looking like. And you're just going to really want to hope that it is a female one. That way you can evolve it. But if you're also collecting the male one, that might not be a bad idea. So you can just walk around here. Don't go too fast. There are a good amount of spawns that do show up here. So uh, you can keep despawning these guys out, respawning them in. I noticed the front area has a lot of them. So front area has a lot. So if you want to just despawn the entire group, that might be the play. The, the front is really good. So I just leave the area. You can see the whole group and then turn back. I just walk back in. This could be the way, the best way for you to get shinies in here. In. And you should be able to get a nice one for your team, a nice fire poison type. So good luck over here. All right. So if you want to go and start hunting some Grimers, this is going to be the spot by Porto Marinada. You're going to come over to the Pokemon Center spot here and then head over towards the Lighthouse location. And for those who love watching our videos and are subscribers, you already know because you have a lot of shiny luck how to spawn these in. So we're going to tap over to the town shows up and then walk right out. And as soon as you walk out, all the Grimers are going to start to spawn again. And all you're going to be identifying here is looking for a green shiny. That's it. And you're going to keep looping this over and over again till you get your green shiny. So go back to the town, Porto Marinada, step right back out, wait for all these spawns to show up. And you don't really have to do anything at all to grab yourself a nice Grimer. I was expecting that to show up there. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that was such a random thing. Okay, that showed up. Just back at the Porto Marinada again. Come back here. And yeah, just honestly, it shouldn't take you too long to spawn in a nice green one. It should be pretty quick. And for you guys who are very efficient and fast at this, you could probably go really quick and just do it back and forth. But that's how you're going to get your Grimer to spawn in. If you're looking for a good Toxel spot, this is pretty much the area. This also spawned exactly the same like this with the electric sandwich. But pretty much if you go to South Province, area too and just cross the river and come down to this area you're gonna get a lot of toxels just spawning around here and what you're gonna be looking for is a pink one and i happen to get the shiny one using the electric sandwich but also it works with the poison one because this is going to be your poison electric type that does spawn so tons of toxel here very obvious because you'll be seeing the pink one so keep an eye out for toxels in this specific location the best way to do deal with these guys is just despawn the entire group out walk away from them because there's there's a lot over there there. Just fly away, despawn the group out, and then just head back to that spot if needed. And make sure to check your back. Sometimes they, they spawn behind you when you're heading to the new location. Come back to the new location, and if you're lucky, you will get a shiny one to spawn. So that's pretty much how you're going to be hunting down Toxel, which can evolve into Toxtricity. All right, so if you want to get a very nice hunt for this Pokemon over here, which is Grafi Eyes Pre-Evolution, the Shrudel, this is going to be your spot. You want to come from Portondo East and head south towards the street and it's all going to be shrudels here that's it shrudels everywhere and all you're going to be looking for in this area is a shrudel with purple eyes the moment you see purple eyes it's going to be very obvious and that is going to be your shiny with it with the electric sandwich we had a bunch of pikachu and pichu spawn here but now with the poison sandwich we got a bunch of shrudels here so it should be easy to despawn this group out you could auto battle them knock out a bunch or you could just walk away from the tree despawn that entire group out and then once that whole group is despawned spawned out, you can head back towards a tree and start looking for the purple eyes ones. Good luck with your shooter hunt. Now, if you're in the mood to go for some Grafi eyes, head over to the tag tree thicket second half portion so across the river over here now when you're here you're going to start to see your graphite eyes they're going to be spawning in this area you're also going to see its pre-evolution right over here and these are going to be your shrudels and what you're going to be doing is hunting your graphite eye and shrudels in this area by just rotating around this lake area and exploring the land so i noticed this is a good option you're going to also get a little bit of fungus here and there spawning but they're not going to be too obnoxiously bothering you just don't run into them if you see a white cap on the floor avoid it and here are the shinies on the screen for graphi eye and it's pre-evolution so you guys know exactly what you're looking for but pretty much what you want to do here is just follow around this area make sure to like wrap yourself around the rock area see what's going on over there you always want to check the most lands because it'll be really annoying if you decide to just cut short and you missed a shiny because of that make sure you're also zooming in so you can see if the pokemon there have purple eyes that's very important as well and i'll just show you a little bit faster 
faster this path and then you're gonna rotate around here you're gonna notice the lake to your right you're gonna see all your pokemon spawning around you and i'm really hoping by me zooming i'm not missing out on a shiny just keep doing that and then rotate again and just rinse and repeat until you happen to bump into a shiny graphite so if you want to go for graphite not just a pre-evolution itself this will be your spot all right if you place yourself around arta zone right by this water facing this area this is going to be a dual hunting spot for both strudel and venonat as soon as you step out over here it's going to say the area Area, East Province Area 1. As soon as you do that, you're going to start to see Venonats. Now, here's what the Venonat shiny looks like, and here's what the Shrudel shiny looks like. This is going to be a dual hunting area for both of these Pokemon. So that's what they look like. Uh, you want to identify the purple eyes on Shrudel. So go ahead and check them out. I'm currently in a bunch of rain. And so it's pretty easy to just walk around and despawn them. Or you can simply just do town spawns by just tapping Artazone and coming back because the Venonats are spawning in everywhere over here. So that's a fast way. If if you want to get the Venonat shiny pretty quick, just tap the spawn right here like this. We're in town. So it's, it's a very slight touch. There we go. Archer zone. Then we step out East Province Area 1. Just wait for a second. Look around. See where the Venonats are. See what the Shrudels are doing. And you can also double tap the home button to do the zoom in. And you can do that via your settings in the actual Nintendo Switch and not in the game. So this is a pretty fast way if you want to just spawn in Venonats really quick. Just boop, gone. And then boop. Come back and they're all going to be around the area. So definitely a very good and obvious vent on that spot. The shootles are just here for a little bonus if they happen to be close as well. So yeah, good luck hunting your Venonat in this area. Now, if you come over to the North Province Area 2, this is basically your bamboo forest. You're just going to get tons and tons of Venomots and Amoongus and Fungus families. You're going to be looking for a blue moth and blue pokeballs. So pretty much just shinies you're identifying is going to have anything with blue. That's what you're going to be focusing on when running in this forest. Now, simple thing to do here is just look left, look right at the families, look at the moths, and you can travel across from one area to another area. That is a great way of just getting through the entire forest. Make sure to check the right and check the left, just so you cover all your grounds and you don't want to miss anything. Um, having the families of Amoongus and Fungus covered here does make it a little bit of a nice hunt and having another Pokemon just around is fine. So in a way, it is a good dual hunting spot for two Pokemon here. But you already know the Venonat, Venonat, Venonat spot. And now you got the Venomoth spot. Anyway, so what I like to do is just completely just do this entire walk, reach the other side, make sure to check on the families. And once I get to this point, I'm going to just split, turn around and head back and see what I get. So you're going to keep repeating this until you get the desired shiny you want. So if you get a Moongus, great. If you get your Venomoth, fantastic. Uh, so that's pretty much what the Bamboo Forest is going to be offering you when you come here. So good luck with these shinies, and I'm sure you'll be able to get one very, very easily. If you want to hunt down some Marinis so that you can evolve it into Toxapex, this is going to be your spot at the Lavencia Beach, right over here, south of Lavencia. Just go to the Lavencia South and head over to this beach. It's going to be fit filled with Marini and the shiny for this one is going to be really obvious as it's going to be a pink one. I randomly bumped into one one day while exploring this beach so this is going to be the best spot to hunt down Marinis. So basically what you want to do with these Marinis is despawn a group of them out kind of like how I'm doing it right now and then once you despawn that group out you're going to head back towards the beach let them all spawn back in take your time and then once they do do a whole entire check around look for the pinkish reddish one and that is going going to be the shiny so you're going to keep doing this until you see the shiny i believe you can do a little beach hopping if you choose to it should be safe but you know usually you could stick to one beach but if you get bored you want to just do a little bit of a a little bit of a difference am <laughs> i going to a second beach i know it, it makes a difference for some people but just to change up the environment you could just cross over to this beach and see the spawns over here but i do prefer that main beach over there so good luck getting your marini i believe you can pull up a shiny one this is an amazing pokemon and toxapex is just a great pokemon in itself so good luck so pretty much when you're in area one you're gonna find just skunk tanks and survivors only if you're playing scarlet skunk tanks are everywhere in scarlet in violet you're not you don't have to deal with this and you're probably gonna have an easier hunt with survivors but here i just bumped into my survivor it is a green colored one and it, he's oh it's coming right towards me okay oh look at that but pretty much this is where i am 
them on the map right now and circling around this entire area you're just gonna get a bunch of skunk tanks uh for scarlet and you're gonna see also a uh, vipers on the floor it's it's a little chaotic in terms of skunk tanks being here so pokemon violet players are gonna have a lot better time hunting these down but that's what the snakes are gonna be like and if you're in scarlet unfortunately i'm sorry you're gonna have to deal with the skunk tanks but you'll be looking for the pink stunkies pretty much on the floor i call them skunk tanks but they're, they're pretty much they're stunkies and the survivors you're just gonna be looking for that nice shiny it's a little harder hunt for us scarlet players but violet players you should have a very easy time being able to get your survivor in this area and scarlet players just go ahead and catch a stunky if you find a pink one in and that's pretty much the rotation you're gonna make for the survivor so just despawn them out respawn them in that's pretty much what i'm doing here i'm just despawning them out like that and then i'm coming back into the area and respawning them in until it was until I can see what I can get. So in area one, you could see for Violet players, we're not seeing any Stunkies, no stun tanks. It's just going to be our Survipers here. And uh, it's a lot easier to pull up on a shiny in Violet. So just keep that in mind, Violet players, you're going to have a way easier time hunting Survipers over here. If you want to just focus on Gulpins, if you're a Pokemon Violet player, this is going to be your spot. You're just going to have to come all the way to Artizone and do these little town resets right over here. That's it. Artizone, come out and do your town resets this is going to be right over here at artisan west and you can rinse and repeat this pretty much until you get a shiny if you don't want to run out anywhere and you'll be able to get one pretty pretty simple so just repeat that make sure you're also paying attention to the cliff make sure you're looking at the left side because they spawn up there they spawn to the left and they will spawn to the right so keep your eyes on all those locations and you should be fine a good thing to do is just do a little jump so you can identify what's on the left and right as opposed to just looking so do like three jumps looking at the right looking at the left looking on top if it's not the shiny, just go back, refresh, come back out, and rinse and repeat that over and over again. I think that's the best way to do it, to see that you don't miss out on anything. All right, and that's pretty much how to hunt Gulpin solo. So for Scarlet players, this is going to be an area where you're going to be hunting both Skunk Tank, Stunkies, Krogunks, and Toxicroaks. This entire area of Lake Casaroya running up and down this pathway. This is going to be where you're going to be hunting them. I'm telling you, Scarlet players are really cursed with the stunkies here basically what you want to do is just run up and down because you're not going to get single spawns you're just going to be getting family spawns reload from this spot turn around oh it's raining by me and you're going to see the there's there's your two families they're basically going to be spawning in this entire area now there is a better way to separate these specific ones out these stunkies and stunk tanks can be found with a dark sandwich in pokemon scarlet and with a fighting sandwich you can separate out so that this whole entire pathway is basically just toxic croaks and Krogunks. So you don't have to worry about any of these being together. So this is just an option you have if you've popped the sandwich and you're like, hey, I want to go hunt some more poison Pokemon. Well, now you have the information on how to do it. And basically the pathway I run is all the way up to this rock waiting for things to spawn. And you have to also be aware that if you're a Scarlet player, the skunk will explode. The skunk does explode and you need to be careful of that. But this is a great way if you just want to hunt two families at once. So this will be your dual hunting area for Pokemon Scarlet players. Players. All right, now for Violet players, if you're at the Castle Royal Lake, you're running this pathway, you're going to get two families of Pokemon. So you're going to get the Swallet and Gulpin family line, and we are going to also get the Toxie Croak and Krogunk. So all you're going to have to do here is just run real fast across the area and get these families to spawn until you bump into the Shinies. The Shinies are here as shown on the screen. So Violet players are going to have to hunt and do a dual hunt here if you want to get quick family spawns to show up, and you'll eventually be able to get your shiny here as you constantly go back and forth getting the family spawns to show up make sure to pay attention uh, when they do show up and spawn and you don't want to miss anything make sure you're zoomed out all the way that way you can rotate your camera as you are running across this entire area so we got two family spawns here of gulpins and there is a toxic group one so yeah just keep doing this until you get it if you're a pokemon violet player all right so for this hunt we're going to be specifically going for quillfish now you need to be in this exact location as me because what we're going to be doing is a diagonal tap and coming back out here now quillfish is shiny is going to be pink so you will not see a very dark spawn as if we look in the water here let me do my double home zoom tip you can see how these are all that weird green color the shiny is going to be pink and very obvious compared to all these guys and you can see how many are spawned out around us right over here so there's quite a bit of them and what we're going to do is we're going to walk back just like this tap the town right there tap the town like that on the diagonal spawn and then come back out and it should say west province area too so make sure you're angled at the town that's gonna be very 
very important. So we want to keep diagonal coming out here. Um, that way you're going to see if it's going to be pink. So we're just looking around. You want to spot a, is it any light colors? Is it pink? If not, you're just going to rinse and repeat, come back like that in your corner and then go back out again until you see your pink quillfish. And you're going to repeat that over and over again. And this should be an easy quillfish hunt to single it out from other Pokemon. And if you're wondering why this is not in the water video or why this is not being covered as a water video, it's because this is a poison type and this helps us separate it out from just doing it in one water video, which is going to be very difficult. So if you're hunting down this specific Pokemon, this is the poison video that you want to use to get your quillfish. If you drift away from this corner at any point and decide, hey, you want to move over to the left a little bit, it's going to start to get a little confusing because once we move a little bit towards the West Province area too, you see that right to the left of those guys, you're going to start to see Screlp show up in the water. So there's the Screlps. They start to show up over here. And it's also a mix with the Quillfish. So if you want to do a little bit of a dual hunt with the Quillfish, well, then you're going to move a little to the left and it's going to be Screlp and it's going to be Quillfish. So if you're down for that double hunt, then this is going to be your spot. So look exactly where I am. The more south, I guess I move, the more it's going to become a dual hunt. So keep that in mind with Quillfish and both Screlp. So for Violet players, you'll be okay because you only have to deal with Quillfish. But for Scarlet players, it's going to get a little confusing as the Screlps are going to be here. Now for Scarlet players with the Poison Sandwich, if you just want to find a nice spot to hunt down some Screlp and possible Dragalge families, it's going to be all the way at North Province Area 3, right about this spot. I've noticed a good amount of Screlp without really being interfered by other Pokemon over here as much. It's pretty nice. Good amounts of Screlps here. Look at that. No Quillfish annoying us, just Screlps everywhere and all we're looking for is that specific Shiny. That's all we have to look for when it comes to these Pokemon. So double home button is going to be very key in helping you identify the ones at a distance. And all you have to do is just despawn and respawn them out and you can see how many families and, and solo spawns you're getting of this Pokemon. So you should be able to be able to find a shiny pretty quick as you can despawn them, which is almost just as good as town resets when you're able to quickly get rid of a whole entire group and let them come back. So go ahead and do this over here just to get your Scrubs or your Dragalgi if it happens to spawn. So good luck Scarlet players. I'm happy I found this spot for you. This is going to be a nice one. Now if you are in Pokemon Violet this is going to be a very fun area to hunt down some Amoongus and Fungus as a solo hunt because in Scarlet, you're going to get Skunkies and Skunk Tanks here, but in Violet, you're just going to be getting a bunch of Amoongus, and all you're going to be looking for in the Socorat Trail is going to be these Mushrooms, and it's going to make your life so much easier just to focus on blue Pokeballs and not worry about those Skunks spawning anywhere. So Violet players, you're going to have a very good time hunting Amoongus as a solo hunt up here. So have fun in the Socorat Trail, and you can see them over here. It's going to be pretty simple. So just ride the trail up to the ends, come back, or you can despawn out a group and, and respawn them in but that's pretty much it pretty good and you should be able to get your nice blue amoongus shiny so good luck with this hunt one of my favorite areas to hunt for glimet and glimora is going to be in the research station lab number four in area zero here are what the shinies look like on screen that nice light blue while the face is going to be the lighter blue and the evolution is just going to be wrapped up in the lighter blue on the outside now this pokemon spawns everywhere inside of the the cave area in the area zero which means you just have to walk around on an entire pathway to just keep respawning them in and out um, you want to also pay attention to the ones on the wall because they could be shiny and you don't want to miss the chance that they are so please look at the ones in the wall because they can hide from you and you don't want to miss out on a shiny glumet or a glamora because this is a really cool pokemon when they get hit they throw out toxic spikes and it just it's nice here we go just gotta just gotta keep checking the walls you know make sure you're not missing out on anything so just pay attention look for those bulbs and you can run the typical pathway we do for some of the pokemon if you don't want to go to the secret rock spawn because the rock spawn isn't as good in this i did try it out so maybe you just want to constantly rotate in and out jump off this cliff repeat run back up but if you want to see what the rock spawn looks like i will show you it's not the greatest so i'd over to it right now this is the one we use almost for every single paradox pokemon that we can spawn down here so we go to this rock and as we run up to it we're going to spawn some of the pokemon so you could use 
use this if you want. Some complaints are that the Pokemon fall off if they're too tiny or you can miss a spawn by down by the rock. It is possible. I've seen Pokemon fall off of here. So keep that in mind. But yeah, this one's also a simple spot if you just want to despawn them out and just come back. So you can do that or just travel anywhere around this area and get them to spawn. And you should be eventually getting your shiny Glamette or Glamora. This is so much better than the overworld spawns in my opinion. So hope you enjoy and you can get yourselves a nice one. All right. So Pokemon Violet players, when you come down to area zero research lab number one, you're going to be greeted by both Venomots and Iron Moth. The reason is because you have Poison on. If you had Fire on, all the Venomoths will disappear. So keep that in mind. So if you're hunting down here, this is pretty much a good Venomoth spot and an Iron Moth spot. Now for Iron Moth, when you're looking for its shiny, you pretty much want to just make sure that there's no red on it. That's it. It's just going to be no red. And that's all you have to slow down and pay attention to. All signs of red are gone on the moth. And that's how you'll be able to tell. And Venomoth, of course, is just going to be a blue color. So that's pretty much how you're going to be able to tell when you're exploring so make sure you're checking every moth real quick making sure there's no red on it and continue to go down that's the best way you can shiny hunt uh <laughs> this moth insanity over here i usually like walking down the pathway on the left you can also circle around there by going straight down and coming down to the left but i usually like heading towards the rock formation just in case to see what we can possibly get over here and i think the spawns do change as we get closer and closer so we have our venomots here we got our poison turned on and yep yeah, there we go we hit the rock area Area and things start to change because these are not assigned to be good poison spawns so this will be where your spawns will end so you have to be forward from this area you can see them over here not shiny not shiny this is basically not the best hunt to do iron moth with like i mentioned you probably want to go come back and do it with a fire once this is a fire poison pokemon but for venomoth i guess if you want to come down here and hunt sure do it uh, it'll probably be a great thing to do so yeah that's pretty much what you're gonna find in the first research station for violet players only in research station lab one now you know all the poison pokemon locations but do you know about these locations because there's some really cool pokemon in here that you have to check out 